Hey guys, Gino Fittis Adventures. I'm still Gino. <clears throat> still my adventures. Well, happy, happy, happy. Uh, thought I'd give you a couple of updates on different things that I've covered in different videos. But today I'd like to tell you uh, what's going on in, in San Gil weather-wise. It's uh, serenity season, but for about the last week or two, it's really been the rainy season. It's been raining and raining and raining and raining to the point where they're having a few dangerous mudslides. They're having some roads being take out, taken out by the water. And also, uh, I think a bridge or two. And that's, that's pretty scary. Um, it makes it pretty hard to get around. And a lot of the people that work, work on, uh, drive motorcycles. And so it makes them hard, it makes it really hard on them too. So what I'm hearing from my, from my good friend Don Pedro in San Gil is that it's, uh, it's a mess. And then it quits raining and the heat hits. And uh, it's kind of got the whole world upside down but not as bad as here on the in the southwest and the northwest uh, and in northern Mexico the drought is just is unbelievable it has uh, about from Mexico City all the way to Seattle Washington the nation's dried up all from California to Oklahoma, Arkansas. Uh, Oklahoma finally got some rain. But, so it's just, it's, it's a crazy imbalance. We're here in, here, here in the northern, uh, in North America, it's just an incredible drought. And in the northern part of <clears throat> South America is inundated, is inundated with water. <clears throat> Which brings me to the point of some disturbing news that I've been hearing. You know, in, in Colombia, the farmers uh, don't use, they don't have many inputs. Uh, they don't have a lot of fertilizer input, and if it is fertilizer input, they use it from um, organic. And a lot of them use, make uh, worm castings by growing worms and, and a lot of, and a lot of, uh, uh, pig poop is used on, on their, on their farm. So they're not really reliant on, uh, the stuff called urea. And urea is pretty much nitrogen. Um, it's a petrochemical that works really well. Uh, as the nitrogen as nitrogen goes, and uh, what I didn't know until just a while ago, I had never been around DEF, and DEF D E F is this additive that they use in the modern diesel engines to make them burn better. Well, come to find out, DEF is urea. So you've got all the truckers in the United States at least, and I don't know where else, probably the whole world, dependent on urea, which is a petrochemical. And then you've got these crazy, um, example, Trudeau, trying to cut fertilizer use 30% in, uh, in Canada. I know, what is it, these, these green people are just, I mean, they're out of their freaking minds. They're going to starve you to death. They are freaking going to starve you to death. Number one, you're not going to have the production that you usually have. Well, number one, you've got the drought to deal with. Number two, where stuff is still growing and people aren't putting or fertilizing on it, you're going to get 30, 40% less production. <clears throat> and then add on top of that, if urea is hard to find, the trucks won't roll. So you've just cratered, you've just cratered the whole food chain for North America and Europe. 
How do you do that? How do you do that with a conscience? Oh, I'm sorry. I went from raining in Colombia to 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 craziness in North America. My gosh, come on, guys. Um, I personally do not know how to affect the craziness that is coming upon <clears throat> everybody. And it's self it's inflicted by a few a few people. People like Tudeau, people like Biden, people like whoever's the leader of the Dutch uh, uh, of the Netherlands, uh, telling the farmers they're going to take their farms if they use fertilizer. Wow, guys, um, we've been feeding the world, and I really don't think you can blame the drought on climate. Change. Well, yeah, you can blame it on climate change. Climate changes all the time, all the time. In 1950, my father's ranch was so dry, did not rain for three years, that the blowing sand was covering up the yuccas. And trust me, my father's ranch was rolling grasslands. Still is rolling grasslands. It survived, imagine that, it survived a three or four year drought. Um, a lot of businesses do. So, where are we going? We've got, we've got huge rains in Central and South America. We've got extreme drought in um, North America. And I think Tennessee started to have floods. It's just crazy. It's crazy all the way around. So that's why I'm still, I'm still, I'm still hyped on, on Columbia. Because in Colombia, you don't need irrigation. You don't need an irrigation pump. It's going to rain. Uh, fertilizer. You can make organic fertilizer. <clears throat> and they can make petrochemical fertilizer. Uh, it's going to be a lot of hungry people if our leaders take away the production of North America and Canada in the wheat fields and the in uh, the grain oils and all that stuff it's it, it, it's going to be really ugly but there's going to be pockets like like South America is is a jewel <clears throat> it's still raining it's still good uh, people are still eating people are still working Southern Mexico is the same. Northern Mexico is in trouble. Southern, eastern, uh, south, southwest, northwest United States, all the way to the Mississippi is in trouble. So this kind of went from way too much rain in, in Colombia to way too much drought here in the States to what are leaders thinking? Oh, let's just in the middle of a drought when it's hard enough to produce anything let's just let's just cut off the fertilizer so we can't produce anything do you guys get that part does anybody get what the hell is going on here it's straight up evil straight up evil oh my god i i uh i struggle daily to try not to put these rants on because that's not about this is rant isn't about Columbia but it is Columbia will be a place where you can sit on your half a hectare or an acre half an acre and grow enough to feed four or five families or ten or twenty if you do it right and uh, well we used to grow a lot of stuff in, in uh, southeast New Mexico uh, West Texas, Southern Colorado. The Rio Grande is dry. The Rio Grande River is dry. Don't believe me. Research it. My son lives in Albuquerque. He said that the news was saying that the Rio Grande had gone dry. He drove over to the Rio Grande, and it was by God dry. 
I don't even know what to say about that. But what I do know what to say is we need some new leaders or we need a bunch of us people that know what the hell is going on on the ground. I was a cattle rancher and sheep rancher for 48 years. I was a farmer for 15. I know the drill. And we weren't out there trying to ruin anything. We were trying to make it better for everybody and feed you. And we did a really good job. Where the hell these people came from, that's a mystery to me. But it's got to be all about control and population control and God knows what else. So i got to get off here. I get too emotional. But it is this is the first day of the rest of your life, and we got to figure out how to make it a good first day of the rest of our lives. And so now it's Gino Pettis. Signing out. We'll see you on the flip side.